Hello everyone, this is Amiti Sensei. Today I'll be talking about this design app called Canva. We are going to use it to make some YouTube thumbnails like these. It's super easy with lots of tools to make it simpler for people who struggle with design. So let's talk about it. I've actually been learning a lot about Canva's new features from its stuff and they've kindly decided to sponsor this video. Now Canva does have some in-app purchases. The paid version costs around $15 per month, but the first month is free so you only start paying from the second month on. But if you visit the link in the description below, you can get it free for 45 days instead. If you're interested in trying out the paid version, Canva Pro, then you should definitely check that link. This video is a must watch for anyone who wants to make their own thumbnails, so please watch this video until the end. When you first open Canva, it looks like this. The cool thing about it is how many stylish templates it has bundled in. There are cool colors templates for Instagram, and here we have templates for YouTube thumbnails. You can make some great stuff just by changing around the words. We also have some Valentine's Day templates here. They have a frame like this, so you can just play with the image in the center and make a little collage. To do that, we touch the image and go to the tab on the left called Upload. Here I have some photos that I uploaded from my camera roll, and we just drag one in to change the picture. If you double tap, you can move it around and change the letters at the bottom, among other things. With this, it's super easy to make colors in other designs, and this is one of the best things about Canva. Let's do one more little sample. Now let's head back to the homepage. You can see there is a bunch of stuff for business cards and fashion logos. We are going to scroll to the very top. Here all of the categories are lined up. There are tops, but there are also these panels here. There is quite a few of them, but let's go with flyer. And just like this, a bunch of cool looking flyer designs pop up. There are mostly English ones, of course, but use some Japanese ones as well, and it's super easy to jump in and use. I personally find this Sakura View Event one pretty nice. Today we are going to use this Kyoto Travel Flyer to keep things simple. Just like before, we are going to start by changing the pictures. Before, we press the upload button on the left side here, but this time we are going to choose the picture button instead. This shows a bunch of really awesome looking pictures and art that Canva has bundled in. Apparently, they have cameraman and Canva who took all of these. But you do need Canva Pro, the paid version, before you can access these photos. For example, you might type in camp in the search bar, right? This brings up a lot of nice camp-related pictures. You can use these like any other pictures too. Just drag and drop them in. Now we replace our Kyoto picture with a camp picture. Maybe if you happen to want to make a flyer with barbecue, camping, or even glamping picture, you can take some pictures from here and make it look right on. Of course, if you have your own pictures, you can mix those in too. But for now, let's just stick with these. You can also change the text too, including the color and the font. There are tons of different fonts included, both paid and free. I mean, there are tons. Other design apps often don't have so many options all bundled in, so this is another good thing about Canva. Right now, we're just getting rid of some elements we don't need and changing the color to blue so that they blend in with the rest. And then if we finish up, there we go. It even has animations. If you are sending the flyer over the internet, you can include these animations and really spice it up. You can also print too. And there you have it. By using the template, you can make something like this quickly and easily. So we used the template to make our design just now, but you can also make something from scratch too. There is a button labeled New Design at the top right of the screen. Press it, and a bunch of different canvas sizes show up. 
There's also an option to make your own custom slides at the bottom. Today we are going to make a custom slide and set it to be a YouTube thumbnail, which is 16 to 9. So let's set the size to 1920 times 1080. You can also find the YouTube thumbnail size from the category. On the left we have this sidebar popping up and this suggests some templates and designs that fit with the 16 to 9 format. You can definitely use these, but if you just go to the top search button type in YouTube thumbnail, it will give you specific recommendations for thumbnails. I'm kinda already excited to get started just looking at this. And as you find a design that you like, just press on it and it will be moving to the canvas space like this. If you press this Add New Page button at the bottom, a new canvas will also show up. I'm using a template right now, but if you want to do everything from scratch, you can also paste in a photo and some text yourself. Right now I'm looking at the photo tab on the right, where you can use all the canvas pictures according to your preferences. Here if you search for something like fitness or sports at the top, these pictures of cool looking people will pop up. You can use as many of these as you want. So if you want to put together some sort of 10 minute workout video, you can just press the picture you want and then make sure it fits the frame. There is this blue outline that pops up, just move it so that it fits 16 to 9 format and then press with two fingers to make it bigger or smaller and adjust the position according to your preferences. Next up, we are going to add some text. The option for that is in the middle tab on the left hand side. There's so many templates for the text too, which are like sets of different text groups. We just press it to make it appear on the canvas, blow it up a little, and move it around. Right now the text is all part of one group, but we can press the dissolve group button on the top and split up the small and large text. After that we can edit the text itself. Let's try something like 10 minute core workout. For the text size, you can just slide it like before, but you can also use the tab at the top to adjust it pixel by pixel. Settings for the text spacing are also up here. At the top right, there's an option for letter spacing, which you can adjust using a slider. And if you really don't like the font by default, you can change it to whatever you want to. Just touch the text and choose a different font using the font tab at the top left. Now if you want to write different text using the same font, just select the text and go to the copy button at the top. This will make a copy of this temp part for us to change. Let's make sure to do this core workout part at the bottom right too. I find making the text here bold and big is the best. There is also a bunch of Japanese font here too, so I'm going to go ahead and compare them. This time I'm going to go with a really dark solid font like Noto Sans Black. And we've finished with the text. If you want to make the text pop a little more, you can adjust the background color. For example, we can choose the background, press edit, and adjust the brightness, saturation, and other stuff. Let's make it a bit brighter. Another way to make the text stand out is you can go to the materials tab on the left hand side, which has a lot of different graphics and art available for you to use if you had the pay version. I think this gradation tab here is super useful. It's full of more abstract colors and shapes for you to use. Let's put this behind the text. There is a position tab at the top. If you press the two background button there, the element moves to the other side of the text. This will help emphasize the text or make it easier to read. 
What's more, you can even change the gradation color too. I find this really amazing. We can make the gradation here blue and really make it pop. And with that, we made a really cool fitness video thumbnail. Making something like this is just like fitting together pieces of a puzzle, so it's pretty straightforward. Alright, let's go a bit further. Today's video might be a little longer, but I really want to talk about lots of stuff. Let's try and use our own pictures. To do that, go to the Upload tab on the left, press the Media Upload button, and you can choose your own pictures to save in Canva. This lets you use them in app. This time, let's upload this desktop picture to use. Just like before, I put in some text here. Let's look at some other ways to make the text more readable. After all, for YouTube, figuring out how to make the text stand out as much as possible is really important. At the top here, there is an option label effect. With your text selected, press this. A lot of different decorative effects will pop up. Bubble letters, shadowing, neon side effects. There's tons of options. If you're playing with save, then shadowing might be our best bet. That's the one at the top, in the middle. This lets you play with the shadow color, level blur, distance, all of these different settings. We are going to go with a strong strongish offset and set the opacity to max. That's going to make the color really thick like it's pitch black. Strong offset, max opacity, and that will give us a strong black shadow effect. We should also put a small subtitle, I think. Whose ultimate desktop is this? It might be a bit confusing, so let's write something like Web Designer to clarify it. Of course, this text doesn't really stand out really well. For times like this, we are going to go to the Materials tab on the left and add in a black background behind the text. Let's choose the Square option. This lets us put some black coloring in our canvas. If we position it right, it really makes the text pop more and brings a sense of balance to the entire design. To end up, we are going to make one more. I'm thinking of a banner for a fashion sale or something. Right now, I'm using a picture from Canva, from, from Canva Pro. There's really a lot of stylish pictures available to use, so definitely take a look. I just searched fashion, and this show up. Just like before, we've added in a headline in the center and some subtitles. This time it's Winter Cell. The dates the cell is on for and the brand name. When you want to move the text around, it's much easier to make it into a group. As for how to do that, you want to start by enabling multi-select. If you press and hold one object, you enable multi-select. After you select the first one, you just press the other objects one by one. Let's try it out one more time. Start off by pressing and holding any object, and when this message pops out at the top, you select the second and third objects. 
Then you just press the finish button at the top and press the form grid button under the three dots. This combines the three objects into one so you can move it all at once. It's super easy. It also expands or shrinks uniformly if you change the size too. So please remember this grid function. We are going to finish by adding a black background behind the text like before. But this time we are working on a thumbnail like this, so let's lower the opacity a bit. After we make it black, we just adjust the transparency level like this and make it look really stylish. And now we are finished. To sum up, here are some of the templates without any changes. We just changed the pictures for these. And here's one we did from scratch. We used a picture from Camera Pro and put some text in. Here's the one we made with our own picture. And this last one also uses a Camber Pro picture, where we put in this sort of transparent background behind the text. Today we did lots of landscape thumbnails, but you can do poetry ones and square ones too. Nothing's off limits. So please make use of this video and try some of this yourself. I also took some time to put together all the things you can do with Canva Pro. I didn't talk about magic resize today, but it's really great. For example, if you wanted to change the landscape designs we made to be squares or portraits, you can do all of that nicely with one button. And that's magic resize. Also, there's the animation feature. You can use parts of it in the free version, but this lets you make animated Instagram stories or posters. You can also cut out backgrounds in the pro version. This is pretty cool. It's kind of like Photoshop where just by pressing a button, you can cut out the background really precisely and leave only the object behind. This can be a lot of work usually, so the fact that it's bundled into the app is really great. Another great feature for designers is that you can upload your own fonts into Canva and use them. And like I said before, all of those awesome photos are yours to use in Canva Pro. This goes for fonts, photos, and those graphical materials I was using earlier. Altogether, there are almost 75 million different elements to choose from, including pictures and videos. 75 million. There's so many that I will never be able to use them all, but you can definitely find whatever you're looking for here. Looking for the right elements for you to use can be often tricky, but with Canva, you can do it all in one package. Canva Pro also allows you to save these elements on your iPad or make folders for them in Canva. After all, keeping track of 75 million different elements is pretty difficult, but Canva's got you covered with that. These are all the things you can do with the Pro version. Of course, the free version is still really useful, but if you want to do some serious design work with Canva, definitely check out the Pro version. If you go to the link in the video description, you can extend the free trial period from 30 to 45 days, so please give it a try. And there you go. I talk a little longer than I expected, but there are so many things you can do with this app, and there's no way I can talk about them all, but I'm hoping to make another video and talk about Canva a little more. Alright, that's all for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks of iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!